In this skill, we're going to be doing titration calculations. In a titration, we use a solution of a known concentration to figure out the concentration of another solution of unknown concentration. So in this question, we have a 0.879 molar calcium hydroxide solution and a hydrochloric acid solution of unknown concentration. So there we've got our known and our unknown concentration. We're then going to use the calcium hydroxide as the titrant in the burette. So looking at our image over here, this is the burette. That's the glass tube here with the tap at the bottom. And it has all those lines on it that you can use to measure the volume in the burette. And then we have 0.0355 litres of the hydrochloric acid as the analyte in the conical flask. So you can see here the conical flask. That solution in there, that is the hydrochloric acid solution of unknown concentration. We're also told we're using bromothymol blue as the indicator. So you can see the solution in the flask is yellow to start with and it's green at the end. That's because we've added this indicator, bromothymol blue, which is yellow in acidic solutions, green in neutral solutions, and blue in basic solutions. So we're going to use that to figure out when the reaction is complete. So we've got our unknown concentration acid in the conical flask. We've got our known concentration calcium hydroxide solution in the burette. So the scientist is going to use the tap to let out small amounts at a time of the calcium hydroxide solution. And the moment that the solution in the conical flask turns green, we know it's neutral. And that means that the hydrochloric acid has completely reacted with the calcium hydroxide that we've added. So we can use the number of moles of calcium hydroxide we added to figure out how many moles of hydrochloric acid we have and then use that to figure out the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, so let's start by reading from our burette. We want to find the initial reading and the final reading. If we subtract those values, we're going to figure out how much of the calcium hydroxide solution we've added. So looking at our diagram, we're going to measure from the bottom of the meniscus. So this is the bottom of the meniscus. So if we go along to see where that hits, it hits here. Now, a burette might be slightly confusing because the numbers start at the top and go down. You can see we've got three here and four below. So we're actually going to read from top to bottom. So this number here has two extra dashes after the three. That's showing us it's 3.2. We can also add an extra significant figure that we're going to estimate. Here, that looks to be pretty much exactly at 3.2 to me. So I'm going to say that's 3.20 milliliters. We can go ahead and fill that in over here. Awesome. Then looking after, again, we're looking at the bottom of the meniscus, which is here. And that looks to be perfectly on that line there. So I'm going to say this is 37.00. Because 37.0 is my measurement to that line. And then I'm adding an extra digit, which I'm estimating. But it looks to me to be exactly on that line. So I'm calling it 37.00. So we can fill that in here. Awesome. Okay, so we've got our initial and final readings for the burette. Now we can subtract them to figure out how much we added. So our final reading was 37.00. Our initial reading was 3.20. So if we subtract those, we're going to get 33.80 milliliters as the volume that was added. So let's go ahead and fill that in here. Awesome. And we need to get that into liters. So let's do a conversion. We're going to use the conversion factor, which is one litre is a thousand milliliters. So we can set up a conversion like normal. We've got 33.80 milliliters. 
and we want to convert from milliliters into liters. So milliliters are going to go on the bottom, so it will cancel out. Liters on the top, and we've got 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. So now we're going to multiply everything on the top, divide top by bottom. The milliliters will cancel. We're left with 33.80 times one divided by 1,000 liters. If we put that into our calculator, we get an answer of 0.0338 liters. So let's go ahead and fill that in over here. Awesome, okay. So we figured out the volume of calcium hydroxide that we added. That's the volume of calcium hydroxide needed to completely react with the hydrochloric acid because that's where we saw the solution go neutral, meaning it's completely reacted. We also know the concentration of the calcium hydroxide. That was our known solution. It's 0 0.879 molar. So if we know the molarity and we know the volume, we can use that to figure out how many moles we have. Let's head to our reference sheet. Here's the molarity equation. Molarity is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume. Now we want to find the number of moles, so let's multiply by the volume on both sides, leaving us with the number of moles equals molarity times volume. So we can put on our numbers. The number of moles is equal to the molarity given in the question, 0 0.879, multiplied by the volume that we just found, 0 0.0338, we put that into our calculator, we get a number of moles of 0 0.0297 moles. Let's go ahead and fill that in. Awesome. So we figured out the number of moles of calcium hydroxide that we have. Next, we need to figure out how many moles of hydrochloric acid must have been present initially in the solution so that they react completely with 0.0297 moles of calcium hydroxide. So what we found was moles of calcium hydroxide, and we want to convert that into moles of hydrochloric acid. So looking at our chemical equation up here, we've got two moles of HCl react with one mole of calcium hydroxide using our coefficients from the equation there. So we're going to use that as our conversion factor in our dimensional analysis table. So we're starting with 0 0.0297 moles of calcium hydroxide. And we want to convert from moles of calcium hydroxide, putting that on the bottom so it will cancel out with our original unit. We're converting into moles of HCl. And we know that one mole of calcium hydroxide reacts with two moles of HCl. So now we can multiply everything on the top, divide top by bottom, moles of calcium hydroxide and it cancel out, and we're left with 0 0.0297 multiplied by two divided by one moles of HCl. If we put that into our calculator, we get 0 0.0594 moles of HCl. So let's go ahead and fill that in, the answer box. Awesome, okay. So we figured out how many moles of HCl were present initially. Finally, we need to find the initial concentration of the HCl solution. We've already used this molarity equation. That's the same one we're gonna use now. Molarity equals the number of moles divided by the volume. We're trying to find the molarity, or in other words, the concentration, so we can go ahead and put our numbers in because it's already rearranged correctly. The number of moles we just calculated was 0 0.0594. We're dividing that by the volume that we had initially of HCl, which we were told in the question was 0 0.0355 liters. So if we put that into our calculator, we're gonna get a molarity of 1.67 molar for our HCl. Let's go ahead and fill that in down here and check we got that correct. Awesome. So that's a titration calculation. The whole point is that we have one solution where we know the concentration, one solution where we don't know the concentration, and by reacting them completely together using a indicator to figure out when the reaction is complete, 
we can figure out the concentration of the unknown solution. So our first step is reading from our burette to figure out how much of our solution we added. So we're going to take the initial and final readings and subtract them to get the amount added. Then we're going to use that along with the concentration of that known solution to figure out how many moles of that solution reacted. We're then going to use the chemical equation to figure out the mole ratio between the two substances reacted together and use that to figure out how many moles we had of the solution with an unknown concentration. And finally, we'll use that along with the volume given in the question to figure out the concentration of the unknown solution.